You're listening to Crud Talk, a ministry of Fifty Shades of Grace. Everybody's got a story. I'm guessing like me, you've been hurt before. But what if I told you there was more to this life than being stuck in the hurt and sin of your past? Hey, we all have crud, but it's how we deal with it that makes all the difference. Today's episode is brought to you by Cross and Crowns Ministry. We thank you for your generous gift, which allows us to share hope and continue to help people deal with the crud in their lives. So thank you. Welcome everybody to Crud Talk. I'm Sonia Bruner. How are you doing? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, some of you may know, or maybe you don't know, but I have merchandise for sale that helps me raise money for, you know, kind of to support my ministry. And the Lord has given me a really cool idea that goes along with my story. I always wanted to be loved, but never felt like I was. It's kind of my past. It's my crud, right? I just keep working through that. And the Lord just keeps proving himself every day, right? So when he gave me this idea, I was like, oh my goodness, this is so true. Here's the premise. We believe that all people are tied by a common thread. That thread is that we all wanna be loved. My story is this, I was a child who was sold to men that hurt me. When my mom found out, she hurt me too. When I was 12 years old, I met a man who changed everything. He rescued me, he saved me, he changed my life. His name is Jesus. I have spent the last 25 years sharing my story and helping others to deal with their crud. So they too can know that they are loved. Each design is uniquely its own, worn from life, tossed aside, and forgotten by most. Like each of us, it probably has a story it could tell. Taking something that would seem worthless and creating something beautiful. That's what Jesus does for us. Strong, beautiful threads of hope. It's so amazing. So I put these designs on flannel shirts. They're like medallions. I do all kinds of different designs. These shirts are unwanted, y'all. They're thrown away, like given away or thrown out or given to goodwill. I, they're repurposed, so each one is unique, but I never know when I do the shirts, when I put the design on, what I'm gonna get. Some turn out bright and vivid, others are more subtle, and some don't take it all, just like people. I was invited to an event this weekend called Day of Joy, put on by Cross and Crowns Ministry. Oh my goodness, so this year I had a booth for my shirts, the singing was amazing. There was like 700 women praising Jesus. If you saw my wall on Facebook, you I, I posted a video. Incredible, I just love that. And I have to say, when I spoke at this event last year in 2022, I shared my story and I led worship. The people were so, so, so supportive. And I had so many people come up to me this year and share that they listened to the podcast every week and they loved my CD. I didn't even know people listened to CDs anymore, so I gave them away free last year. And this lady came up to me and said my son and I listened to it in the car and he just loves your music and I that there's just something about that that just touches my heart so much and some were even wearing my shirts that they bought last year and then they bought even more this year it was wild I was joking with some people at church today and I said do not get in the way of ladies in their flannels (laughs) y'all it's the truth they went crazy for the Threads of Hope shirts and the t-shirts too. So my t-shirts you might not know say 50 Shades of Grace and they're all in awesome colors like purples and pinks and there's a blue in there too. And I have crud shirts that say got crud on the front and then on the back they say deal with it, (laughs) sonyabrunner.com. They're so fun. I was I was kind of joking, but sort of not joking. I think I lost a chunk of my hair when the ladies were grabbing their favorites off the rack. (laughs) I love it. And when I share my story, It's so much more than a shirt. You know what I mean? It's true. Plus, I hear all the time about how God uses those shirts as conversation starters all over the place. One time, you you guys, I, I flew into Virginia and I was waiting in the airport and a lady walked by with a got crud t-shirt on no lie she walked by and i was like oh my goodness that's my shirt she said are you the crud dealer 
I was like, yes, that's me. It's so fun. Anyway, if you want more information, go to my website, sonyabruner.com and check out, oh, the hoodies. They're so cool. So we introduced those. They're brand new this year. And then we also introduced long sleeve t-shirts too. And people really love them for fall and winter. So you can find more information and pictures of the Threads of Hope shirts on Facebook. Just look for Threads of Hope. A big shout out to Pastor Ricky McHotty Hot Hot Bruner. He hates it when I say that, but it's true, y'all, for helping me at the show this weekend. There was a big game, a big game, and he still came and helped with the show, and he didn't complain. He didn't, he just was so sweet. He's literally Jesus with skin on, y'all. He is sweet to me, and he's this quiet strength that's just always there for me. I just love me some Rick Bruner. Anyway, thank you, honey, for that. So, tonight's podcast I had someone write to me and they had a lot to say I'm just going to share um briefly um kind of what what they said (laughs) they were questioning why I shared a testimonial video with two different comments that I received regarding the key to freedom conference and they said and I quote when you shared that it sounds like you're boasting regarding something that the Lord should get the credit for It doesn't matter if people got saved because you don't know their heart or if they meant it. First of all, let me say, this is the only negative comment I have received about the Key to Freedom Conference. I'm not saying that there couldn't have been more, but I didn't hear anything negative. So go Jesus, yay for Jesus for that. Number two, we're good at celebrating stupid stuff that doesn't matter who wins the game who got taylor swift tickets who found gas for the cheapest price who is the biggest trend on social media the johnny depp trial yada yada yada, right that's not necessarily bad but if you're only celebrating those things as a christian i don't think that's okay i've talked about this before one of my biggest heartaches about the local church is that we do not shout enough We don't celebrate what Jesus has done, is doing, and will do. We're all guilty of this to some degree. So I'm 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 gonna put myself right there with everybody. Oh, we complain about what isn't happening in the church more than we celebrate what is happening. All of us are guilty of this. It's horrible. The Bible says do everything without complaining and arguing. You y'all, I feel like this verse right there would eliminate all of us from heaven without a relationship and forgiveness with Jesus. (laughs) Amen. Oh my word. When I think about how many times I have complained, it's not good. Convicting. Oh my goodness. I read somewhere that there are two different kinds of complaining. One is faithless in that it says that God is not adequately good or wise or faithful or even competent. Otherwise, he'd treat us differently or handle the world issues differently. It's like when we complain in a faithless way, we're saying God is doing it wrong. A faithful way of complaining is like what David did in the Psalms. When we cry out because of our anguish or grief or loss or the craziness of the sin-filled world, God is okay with that. In fact, he even tells you how to do that. It says in Psalms 142, verse one and two, with my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my troubles before him. So that's what we're, he's okay with that. But when we complain in a faithless way, we're basically saying, dude, you're not doing it right. (laughs) You're wrong. (laughs) That's not good. So what does shouting look like? What would celebrating look like? Is it okay? Or are we to be quiet and reverent all the time? Well, if our roadmap is the Bible, and I believe it is, this is what God's word tells us in Luke 15, verse three. So Jesus told them the story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. In verse six, when he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. And then in verse seven, in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. And it goes on. Verse eight, or what woman... um, 
Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And then when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. And verse 10, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents, calling all the friends and neighbors rejoicing joy yep no celebrating going on at all (laughs) i think there's a lot of celebrating okay what about this verse 11 we're still we're just continuing on to illustrate the point further jesus told them this story a man who had two sons verse 12 the younger son told his father i want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons Verse 13, a few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. Verse 16, the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. Verse 18, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me as a hired servant. Verse 20, So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him verse 21 his son said to him father i have sinned against both heaven and you and i am no longer worthy of being called your son and in verse 22 listen to this but his father said to the servants quick bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet verse 23 and kill the calf we have been fattening we must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Verse 28. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. Verse 31, his father said to him, listen to this, everybody. Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. Verse 32, we had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he's found. Listen to me. It's not wrong to celebrate. Jesus rejoices in heaven. Jesus, you know, the one that made us, the angels rejoice. There is joy before the angels of God. And who is before the angels of God? God. There is joy in God over a sinner who repents. When the Lord saves people and changes lives, you call all your friends and neighbors and you rejoice and you celebrate. As a Christian, I want to celebrate what God is doing. That encourages me to keep going, to keep sharing my faith, to keep praying, keep studying the word. When I see God moving in people's hearts, there's no greater encouragement to me. But we can't always see everything. So when I share publicly, I want to bring you in to what I get to see so that you can be encouraged too. It's important to me to encourage people, especially those that work with me. When you are doing what God has called you to do and people see Jesus change in lives, that is powerful. They want to get involved. So I shared my heart and vision and I asked people if they wanted to sponsor the conference and the Lord led them to do that big time. Not because of me, but because he did that. The best compliment I can ever receive is, I see Jesus in you, Sonia. I don't see you, I see Jesus. So I want them to know what happened. 
I want you all to know so they can get to at least hear what Jesus did with those funds that they gave or those prizes that they donated with the prayers that they prayed and the volunteering. We give money to causes all the time, but we don't always get to know how they're used or the impact that they make. Encouragement is always right. When you support my ministry, God is changing people's lives in spite of me. (laughs) I get to be in the room, but we all get to rejoice and party over one heart that repents. If you're not celebrating, shouting, rejoicing, or dancing, praising, I don't know what you do, the question we should ask is, why not? To me, there's more of a deep-seated crud thing going on there. Maybe we should deal with that. That's a, that's a thought. One thing I have to say, I thought about the, in the scripture when the father said, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. Everything I, the Father, have is yours. I think we miss that sentence. Maybe some of us are mad because the ones who did it wrong get all the attention and we feel slighted. What's the point of being faithful if the ones who always mess up and don't care about God or doing what what they're supposed to do always get the attention or the celebration for just doing what you and I have been doing all along? We don't get the party. We're just expected to do the right thing every time. But they do one thing right, and it's like they're the golden child. They get it all, or do they? This is what jumped out at me. When a person walks away from Jesus and is doing their own thing, they miss out on the Lord's everything. Think about it. When I walked away from Jesus and I tried to be my own boss, doing it my way, how I wanted to do, when I wanted to, I didn't have the same closeness or covering or blessing as someone who stayed close to Jesus. I'm not talking about salvation here. That's not even up for discussion. We're not talking about giving that or taking it away. We're not talking about that. That's not real. If you're saved, you're saved. But we do try to be our own boss all the time because we wrestle with flesh, okay? Freedom in Christ means we have the freedom to choose not to sin. But you and I, let's be real. Sometimes I choose to sin. I talked about this last week. Sin is attractive. Sin is fun. Otherwise, we wouldn't even entertain it. I'm not talking about salvation. You cannot lose your salvation. If you are saved in Jesus, you are saved. Okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about walking away and doing your own thing. Being apart from the spirit-led daily relationship with the Lord. He's not left you. That's not what I'm talking about. I know I'm going to get letters. People, you said you can lose your salvation. No, I am not. I'm saying when you choose to go out from underneath God's umbrella of anointing, you choose to to go against his will or you sin, okay? And you walk away from it and you live in a lifestyle or a choice or a way of living or an attitude or what you fill in the blank. You do not have the same closeness that you do when you are seeking Jesus every day. Can I at least get an agreement on that? When you are apart from a spirit-led daily relationship with the Lord, that's what we're talking about. Do Do you understand? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. The prodigal son did not lose his relationship to his father, but he missed out on what the father had and was able to give to the son. Had he stayed close like the other son, he would have had access to what? Everything. He can't get that time back. Sure, he can be forgiven for sure. But when I have walked away from Jesus, I've missed out on the closeness and the blessings and the covering of being close to him. That hit me tonight really hard as I prepared this podcast. That tiny sentence from the father to his angry son who felt slighted, that might be where some of us are tonight. If you've been angry about that, Maybe that's why you won't celebrate what God is doing. Just a thought. Number three, God is always the one who gets the credit. The Lord showed me what I was to do and I tried my best to do it. I take no credit for any of it, but I won't apologize for sharing what God did. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. I had some moments the following day, I'm gonna be totally brutally honest, when am I not, where I was like, a little girl trying to get her daddy's attention. Jesus, Jesus, did you see me? Did I do good? Did I? He wouldn't say yes or no. 
I kept trying to get him to give his approval over what I did at the conference or for the conference, and he wouldn't say a thing. All he'd say was, did you do what I asked? And I was like, yes. And he would respond, then you did what you were supposed to do. And I was like, no, 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 no. Did I do good? Did you see me? Are you pleased with me? Did I do good? And he would not say. Finally, I was getting discouraged, and I heard his still strong voice in my heart. Sonia, I love you no matter what you do. I loved you before the conference. I loved you at the conference. I love you if you messed it up and did bad. I love you if you did the best you ever done. The conference has nothing to do with my love for you. Did you do good? Did you do bad? My answer is it has nothing to do with you doing anything. I love you, period. Oh, that is so powerful. I don't know who else needs to hear that tonight, but oh my goodness, so powerful. Oh, somewhere in, our, in my brokenness, I needed the approval, right? I, look, daddy, look how high I can swing. Look at my big muscles, right? And he was, he's like, I love you no matter what. It had nothing to do on your best day, on your worst day. I love you no matter what. Oh, that's powerful. I, I, I pray there's someone that gets encouragement from that tonight. Number four, anytime, anytime anyone gets saved is a really big deal. How sad that this person doesn't get that or care. Number five, it's not our job to know if a person means it. That's Jesus's job. When our spouse says, I love you, will you marry me? We have no idea the truth in their heart or if they really mean it, but we marry them. When our child says, I love you, mommy, we don't know if they truly mean it or not. They could just want more chicken nuggets, right? (laughs) We can't control what anyone else does. We can only control how we respond. When I do an event, A, I'm sharing the gospel, period. I don't save anyone, but B, I will celebrate what Jesus does when he saves anyone, period. What else is more important than that? The answer is nothing. Nothing is more important than Jesus changing lives. Number six, I think I have over 68 comments so far. (laughs) I'm probably gonna get in trouble for even saying that from the conference about what God has been revealing and showing in those who shared with me. There are many women who trusted in Jesus at the conference. How do I know? I saw it as they looked at me and they've shared it with me personally at the conference or through messages to me personally. I'm probably in trouble for sharing all of it, but I do not care. It's cool. Jesus did that. I got to be in the room. Whatever they meant in their hearts is not my business. That's between them and their maker. But I do know this. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It doesn't say anything about how you act. It doesn't say anything about what you say or do. It says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you what? Maybe we'll be saved. No, you will be saved. Enough of that. Number seven, there is always a party pooper. (sighs) Every party has a pooper. Everybody's got crud. Some of us haven't dealt with our crud and it shows. One of my favorite scenes from Father of the Bride is that Martin Short character who plans the wedding. He's the wedding planner and he sings the song. Every part, oh, how does it go? Every party has a pooper. You're the pooper of the party. Party pooper, party pooper. <laughs> it's my favorite. People, you need to deal with your crud so you will not be a grumpy party pooper for Jesus. By the way, if you're stuck in whatever is making you the party pooper, I can help. I have the key. Because anybody can have a key, but having the right key matters. Number eight, if you don't like me celebrating what Jesus is doing, move on. Don't read my stuff. In fact, unfollow me. (laughs) Wouldn't it be cool if we could shout and celebrate what Jesus is doing louder than we scream for the game at the stadium or yell at the top of our lungs at the concert? What will it take to make you shout? What has to happen for you to cheer and shout for Jesus and what he's doing. What will it take? Go to my Threads of Hope page on Facebook and check out those shirts. They're so cool. And now you got to hear the story too. 
I have flannel shirts there and all kinds of stuff. You can order my t-shirts and hoodies on my website, sonyabruner.com. If you'd like to sponsor this podcast, message me for details. I want to thank everyone for sending me your comments and messages about the Key to Freedom Conference and how it impacted you. I love to hear what God is doing so I can celebrate what God did and what he's doing. Thank you for purchasing a shirt and for sharing this podcast with your people on your social media platforms. I pray that it is a blessing and encouraging to you. If you're struggling with crud, I'd love to work with you. Message me for coaching packages and prices. Deal with your crud so you won't be a party pooper. (laughs) Don't be a party pooper. I'm Sonia Bruner. This is Crud Talk. See you next time.